Welcome back. So as usual, we are continuing with the TAV Selection Commission CGLE examination previous year question papers. So this video, this is your first question. So this question is selected from the paper 2019. The question is, the area of triangle ABC is 44 cm square. D is the midpoint of BC and E is the midpoint of AB. Then the area of triangle BDE is. So the question is about a triangle. And we have, let us draw this triangle as per the given question. We have triangle ABC. Let us name it as ABC. And what is given? D is the midpoint of BC. So let us take D here. It's a midpoint of BC. And E is the midpoint of AB. AB and E is the midpoint. So when I join, I'll get a triangle here. This is BDE. So this triangle BDE, this triangle BDE, what will be the area of this triangle BDE? This is a question. So the total area of the triangle is given how much? 44 centimeters square. Whenever we, the concept here is, whenever we join the midpoints of the sides and the triangle formed will be one fourth of the area of the total triangle. So here, this triangle, if I join this midpoint and this midpoint, I'll get a triangle here. If I join this midpoint and this midpoint, I'll get a triangle here. So the total triangle ABC, the bigger triangle is divided into four equal parts. So one part will be one by fourth of the total triangle. So the total area is given 44. So one by fourth of 44 will be how much? 11. One by fourth of 44, 11. So 11 is the 11 centimeter square is the area of triangle BDE. So the concept here is whenever the midpoints of the sides are joined, the triangle formed will be of the area 1 by 4th of the total area. Total area of the triangle ABC is given 44. And when you join the midpoints, when you join the midpoints of three sides, four triangles are formed. 1, 2, 3, 4. All of them will be of equal area. So the whole triangle is divided into four parts. The total area is 44. So one part will be 1 by 4th of 44. That is equal to 11. So 1 by 4th of 44 is 11. 11 is the correct answer. So let us go to the next question. So here is your next question. The question is, if the number 1005x4 is completely divisible by 8, then the smallest integer in the place of x will be what? Four options are also given to you. A number which is divisible by 8. Let us write that number here. The num given number is what? 1005x4. 1005x4. And this number is completely divisible by 8. So here we use the concept of divisibility by 8. What is the divisibility by 8? Any number, if you want to divide by 8, that number is divisible by 8. If the last three digits are divisible by 8. So let us take the last three digit here. What's the last three digit? 5x4. So if 5x4 is divisible by 8, then the whole number is divisible by 8. That is a divisibility check by 8. A big number is given to us. We need to check whether the number is divisible by 8 or not. So we need to check the last three digit only. If the last three digit is divisible by 8, then the whole number is divisible by 8. So according to this question, this number is completely divisible by 8. This number is completely divisible by 8. That means the last three digit, 5x4, 5x4 will be divisible by 8. 5x4 will be divisible by 8. Now we have to see which is the least integer, the lowest integer, the smallest integer that can come in place of x so that this number is divisible by 8. So we have four options are also given 0, 1, 2 and 3. You can check with the smallest number 0. If I put 0 here, 504. 
Yes, 504 is divisible by 8. If I put 0 here, the number will become 504. 504 is divisible by 8? Yes, 6 times. 6 8s are 48. Balance 2, 24, 3 times. So 504 is divisible by 8, 63 times. So what is the smallest integer that can come in place of x from the given option? From the given option, 0 is the smallest integer that can come in place of x. So we got x will be equal to 0. So the correct option you can mark. The divisibility check by 8. Any number which is divisible by 8, we need to check the last 3 digit only. If the last 3 digit, 5x4, when I put x equal to 0, I will get 504. If 504 is divisible by 8, the whole number is divisible by 8. So divisibility checked by 8 means the last 3 digit only we need to check. Okay. So kindly note it. So let us go to the next question. All these questions are selected from previous paper 2019. Okay. So this question says what? If the base radius of two cylinders are in the ratio 3 is to 4 and their heights are in the ratio 4 is to 9, then the ratio of their volume will be what? Four options are also given. The ratio of the volume we need to find out. Volume of what? Volume of cylinders. So what's the volume of cylinder that we need to first understand? So let us draw two cylinders here. So we have two cylinders. Let us take this is the first cylinder and this is the second cylinder. So now what is given in the question? The radius are in the ratio 3 is to 4. The radius are in the ratio 3 is to 4. That means let us take this is equal to 3R and this is equal to 4R. The radius, radius of the base. And the heights are in the ratio 4 is to 9. So height of the first one is 4H and height of the second one is 9H. So two cylinders first having radius. 3R, height 4H, second 4R, 9H, according to the given question. Now what we need to find out? We need to find out the ratio of their volume. Volume of the first divided by volume of the second. This is what we need to find out. What is volume of the first? Volume of a cylinder. Height H, radius, base radius R. So volume of a cylinder is given by the formula pi R square H. So volume of the cylinder is given by the formula what? Pi R square H. So here we have pi R square will become 3 R square H will become 4 H. Here V2 pi R square will be 4 R square H will be 9 H. So you can see this phi pi and pi I can cancel. R square and R square I can cancel. H and H I can cancel. 3 square will become 9, 9 into 4, 36. 4 square will be 16, 16 into 9, 16 into 9. I can cut this 9 and 36, 4 times. I can cut this 4 and 16, 1 by 4 times. So the correct ratio will be 1 is to 4. Understand very clearly, all these type of questions are very, very common in Staff Selection Commission CGLE exam. Okay, so this is a question from 2019 paper. So we need to know what is the volume, what is the surface area, curved surface area, total surface area and volume of all these figures. Like here this particular question is about cylinder. Sometimes question comes about cone, then hemisphere, sphere, cuboid, cube, anything. So it is better to understand the formula of all these shapes. Okay. So we are talking about two cylinders here. First cylinder is having 3R radius. Second cylinder 4R. Height 4H. Here height 9H. We need to find out the ratio of their volumes. So volume 1 divided by volume 2. And volume 1 pi 3R square 4H. Pi 4R square 9H. You can cancel H and R and pi. So remaining will be 1 is to 4. 1 by 4. So the required ratio 1 is to 4. From the correct option you can mark the correct option. Okay, so let us go to the next question. So here is your next question. The question is, if x, y, z are three numbers such that x plus y equal to 8, y plus z equal to 13 and x plus z equal to 17, then find the value of x square by y, z. Okay, very important question. 
So let us write again what is given. X plus Y is given to you. How much? X plus Y is equal to 8. Then Y plus Z. Y plus Z equal to 13. And then what is given? X plus Z is also given. X plus Z is equal to 17. So these are the three information given. So from here, from here, I will take Y is equal to 8 minus X. And from here, I can take Z is equal to 17 minus X. So I got Y, I got Z. Both the values, I am putting it here. So in place of Y, I can put 8 minus X. And in place of Z, I can put 17 minus X. Plus 17 minus X is equal to 13. What did I do? In place of Y, I am putting this value. In place of Z, I am putting this value. So y plus z I can write at 8 minus x plus 17 minus x. So now 8 plus 17, 25, minus x minus x minus 2x equal to 13. Let us take this minus 2x that side. So it becomes 2x. 25 minus 13 will become 12. So I got x is 2x is equal to 12, x is equal to 6. Put the value of x here y is equal to 8 minus x, x is what? 6, so 8 minus 6 equal to 2, so from here I got y is equal to 2. Put the value of x here, z equal to 17 minus x, so x is 6, 17 minus 6, 11, so from here I got z is equal to 11. So I got the value of x, I got the value of z, I got the value of x, z and y. So now what we need to find out? We need to find out what is x square by y z. So x square is what? x is 6. x square will be 36. By y and z. 2 into 11. So 22. So I can do it what? 18 by 11. So 18 by 11 is the correct answer. So accordingly you can mark the correct option. So this type of questions again, I am reminding you, these type of questions are very, very common in Staff Selection Commission CGNE exam. Okay, kindly note it, then we will go to the next question. So the next question. The next question is, if x is equal to 4 cos a plus 5 sin a and y equal to 4 sin a minus 4 cos a, then the value of x square plus y square is a, b, c, d, 4 options are also given. So x is given to you, x is what? x is equal to... 4 cos a plus 5 sin a and y is what 4 sin a minus 5 cos a you want x square plus y square what is x square plus y square this is what we need to find out so x square plus y square means this x square 4 cos a plus 5 sin a all square plus y square is 4 sin a minus 5 cos a all square. So here you can see this is a plus b all square. This is a minus b all square. So a square plus b square plus 2ab. a square plus b square minus 2ab. So plus 2ab and minus 2ab get cancelled. Here what will happen? 4a cos a plus 5 sin a all square means what? 4 cos a all square plus 5 sin a all square plus 2 ab 2 into 4 cos a into 5 sin a 2 into 4 cos a into 5 sin a plus this plus y square a square plus b square minus 2 ab that is 4 sin a square plus 5 cos a square minus 2 into 4 sin a minus 5 cos a. So here you can see 2 into 4 into 5, 2 into 4 into 5 into cos a into sin a cos a sin a. This plus term and this minus term will cancel. Now what is left? 
फोर कोस स्क्वायर फोर कोस ए ऑल स्क्वायर एंड फोर साइन ए ऑल स्क्वायर फोर स्क्वायर इज सिक्सटीन कोस स्क्वायर ए प्लस साइन स्क्वायर इक्वल टू वन सो सिक्सटीन एंड सिक्सटीन दिस विल बिकम सिक्सटीन दिस टू एंड दिस फाइव स्क्वायर इज ट्वेंटी फाइव सो साइन स्क्वायर एंड कोस स्क्वायर इज इक्वल टू वन सो फाइव स्क्वायर एंड फाइव साइन स्क्वायर एंड फाइव कॉस स्क्वायर विल बिकम प्लस ट्वेंटी फाइव सो टोटल विल बी फोर्टी वन वेरी सिंपल सो द करेक्ट आंसर इज फोर्टी वन हाईली नॉट इट The next question is, out of six numbers, the sum of first five number is seven times the sixth number. If their average is one thirty six, then the sixth number is what? There are total six numbers. The average is one thirty six. So here, average is one thirty six. Average is one thirty six. That means what? Total will be equal to what? Average of six number. So total will be equal to. One thirty-six into six. Eight hundred and sixty. Total will be eight hundred and sixty. And what is given here? The sixth number, the seven times the fifth uh, average sum of first five numbers is seven times the sixth number. So let us take the sixth number is equal to x. Let sixth number equal to x. Therefore. Sum of first five number will be equal to seven times of sixth number. Sixth number we have taken x seven times of x that is seven x. Sum of first five number is seven times of x. So we need to find out what is x. Total is given what? Total average is one thirty six. So total will be eight hundred and sixty. The first five number, the sum of the first five number will be seven x. Sum of first five number will be seven x. So if I add the sixth number also with this, total sum will be equal to what? Total sum will be equal to sum of first five number that is seven x plus sixth number x total eight x. So eight x will be equal to eight hundred and sixteen. So eight x equal to eight hundred and sixteen. So x will be equal to what? Eight sixteen by eight will be equal to one zero two. So one zero two is the sixth number from the given options. We can mark which is the correct option. Okay, thank you, Navid.